Well, I think we see a, a big demand when it comes to the portfolios that we have in our business areas connected to advanced weapon systems and also the sensor side of the business surveillance. And it's mainly Western countries, European countries, of course. I mean, we see Baltic states uh, spending quite a lot of money on, on short-range air defense systems. We've got one contract uh, in the third quarter. We've got another co contract on that side in the fourth quarter now. Poland is investing heavily in defense uh, equipment, of course, but also other Western countries. But it's mainly the surveillance and dynamics business areas, sensors and support weapons that are driving the growth when it comes to order intake. And we are 71 percent up in the first nine months compared to last year. So it's a big demand in the market. Also, the one of the reasons why I ask you that question is because uh, you've announced the, uh, uh, a new production facility in uh, Michigan, in the United States. Um, given that you're still telling us the demand is so strong, where else are you thinking that you might need new production facilities in the near future? You've announced this one in the United States, but any further plans to open new ones in the near, in the near future? Well, first of all, we're investing also in Sweden, of course, uh, adding parallel production lines, building new facilities that will come into play next year. As you said, we have now decided to, to start building something in Grayling, Michigan, that will start end of next, uh, well, during this year and will be up and running in the beginning of 26. We have also launched uh, building a site in outside Delhi, India. Uh, 50 kilometers uh, outside Delhi. So those are the decisions we have taken, but we're looking, of course, to other op opportunities to increase the capacity, but also the redundancy and from a security perspective, it's good to have several sites. But to establish explosives manufacturing sites is not sort of an easy task. You need to look diligently on where you can do that, which where you have the proper facilities and, and land and all that. But we're doing a lot in, in that area right now. But that, those are the decisions we've taken. Naturally, and it is very interesting how this is basically an international approach. And we've had the chance to speak about that uh, recently. But I would like to also look at the policy side uh, of things here. Because, uh, as I said, when we had a chance to speak a couple of months ago, you told me about uh, how European governments had stepped up their investments in defense and how much that has had an impact on your business. As we are now about to witness a new political cycle in Brussels with new commissioners about to take their new roles, what is your message in particular to the new defense commissioner? I like the ambition that uh, Kubilius have presented and I, I like the idea of that we come together more that we align requirements, that we start working together between countries and industries to create scale. And uh, the incentive that uh, we need, of course, is for the politicians to follow the direction of the European defence industry strategy and put enough money in the European defence industrial programme. Uh, that will lead to collaboration, uh, scale effects and, and uh, more capability in Europe, which I think is absolutely necessary that we take more responsibility for our security and, and defence capabilities. The question here, however... That's being negotiated now.